Democrats are going after one of their own, Representative Ilhan Omar, after she asked a perfectly legitimate question to Anthony Blinken, who is the Secretary of State. Now, the question had to do with the investigations pertaining to war crimes that have been committed by various organizations or various governments. And so there was a critical statement by her colleagues following the exchange that you're about to watch right now with Representative Omar and Anthony Blinken. Take a look. I know you oppose the court's investigation in both Palestine and in Afghanistan. I haven't seen any evidence in either cases that domestic courts can uh, both can and will prosecute alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity. And I would emphasize that in Israel and Palestine, uh, this includes crimes committed by both the Israeli security forces and Hamas. In Afghanistan, it includes crimes committed by the Af Afghan national government and the Taliban. So in both of these cases, if domestic courts can't or won't pursue justice, and we oppose the ICC, where do we think the victims of these supposed crimes can go for justice? So that was an important question to ask because the International Criminal Court, which wants to probe the Israeli government for possible war crimes against the Palestinian people in Gaza, is something that the United States government, the Biden administration specifically, does not support. So she's trying to ask, well, if you don't agree with the International Criminal Court investigating this, and we can't rely on domestic governments to investigate their own war crimes, then how how do you propose we do these investigations? And that very question offended several dozens of her own colleagues. And I'll tell you who in just a minute, but Jenk, go ahead. Yeah, first, the context is really important there. And you just saw the context. It's in the context of specific cases of the International Criminal Court. Now, as Anna's gonna tell you, they will pretend that that context did not exist. So I will go further than Ilhan Omar, but she did not go that far. She explained exactly what she meant. And those are cases that are being adjudicated. So I want you to understand that as you see how they're going to mangle what she said as usual. So following that exchange with Blinken, and of course, Blinken gave a non-answer to it. It's not even worth showing, to be quite honest with you, but you can check it out online. Um, following that exchange, uh, she tweeted the following, we must have the same level of accountability and justice for all victims of crimes against humanity. We have seen unthinkable atrocities committed by the United States, Hamas, Israel, Afghanistan, and the Taliban. I ask Secretary Blinken, where people are supposed to go for justice. Now following that, 12 Democratic lawmakers decided to sign a statement condemning Representative Omar for her statement, which by the way, is completely accurate. Okay, and the reason why they're upset is because they feel that it's wrong to compare the United States and the Israeli government to Hamas and the Taliban. So these five, 25 Jewish Democrats in the House of Representatives had signed this letter, the 25 members of- No, I just wanna be clear about it, 12 wound up signing. I'm sorry, 12 did, my bad, but 25 of them had gotten together to figure out what they wanted to do moving forward with and, Ilhan Omar. And Anna, I just right before the show got an excellent source from inside DC mm -hmm. that explained that some of those 25 actually fought back and wanted to protect Ilhan Omar. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's see what the 12 said. Right, so um, so I, as I mentioned, 25 get together. They're trying to figure out how to, uh, I guess, tackle this issue. And in the end, 12 of them had agreed to sign a public statement. And this is what the public statement said, equating the United States to Israel Equating the United States and Israel to Hamas and the Taliban is as offensive as it is misguided, the 12 Democrats wrote in the statement, adding that false equivalencies give cover to terrorist groups. And Congressman Brad Sherman actually took it a step further by releasing another statement where he says, he says this, it's not news 
that Ilhan Omar would make outrageous and clearly false statements about America and Israel. What's newsworthy is that she admits Hamas is guilty of unspeakable atrocities. It's time for all of Israel's detractors to condemn Hamas, and it is time for all those of goodwill to reject any moral equivalency between the United States and Israel on one hand, and Hamas and the Taliban on the other. So, the United States has committed war crimes. We've committed war crimes fairly recently um, under Donald Trump, certainly under the Obama administration. Obama conducted a drone strike on a US citizen with no due process. He murdered a US citizen using a drone strike and then killed his 16 year old son using a drone strike as well. I mean, you can go back decades and talk about how the United States orchestrated coups in various countries, including Guatemala, for on behalf of business interests here in the United States. That led to the slaughter of countless indigenous people, not just in Guatemala, but in other Latin American countries. I know that we like to pretend that in the US, whenever we commit war crimes, it's okay because we do it to spread democracy. But we know what the reality of the situation is, and we can't pretend as if our actions are totally fine, even when it leads to you know, countless deaths, which we later refer to as collateral damage. Is Brad Sherman your congressman? Yeah, Brad Sherman is my congressperson. Mm-hmm. Certainly will not be voting for him, I hope that he gets primaried. Interesting about that. All right, so he, uh, I have a lot to say about this, but first, I wanna tell you about the good folks who fought back, okay? So uh, look, there's rising anti-Semitism in the country, and uh, I don't want any progressive to conflate the issues with we have with Israeli foreign policy, Israeli policy, and American policy uh, with anything else. So yes, it was reported that 25 Jewish Democrats got together to talk, but you have to understand a lot of people in the room did not want to sign the statement, and more than half of them did not sign it. And in fact, some people in the room argued vociferously against it. So I, I want to be careful. So I'm going to read this statement I have from a well placed source in DC. Uh, well placed source in DC. They say that Jamie Raskin was reportedly approached, and according to someone at the meeting, declined to be part of the effort and asked whether the point. Was to advance international law and human rights, or to give people another chance to take a shot at Ilhan? Raskin declined comment. So Jamie Raskin was in that meeting, and apparently he was one of the people who fought back vigorously and said this is a really bad idea. So understand some of the top progressives of the country, some of the top Democrats in the country, including on this issue, are Jewish Democrats. So God bless Jamie Raskin for doing that. Now, let's get to the core of the issue. Uh, Ilhan Omar had a great tweet about this. She said, basically, like, "Oh, you guys are all my colleagues when you need my vote." We have that tweet. Yeah, and let's let's go to it, and then I want to give you more context. Yeah. So she um, specifically called them out. There we go. Um, it's shameful for colleagues who call me when they need my support to now put out a statement asking for clarification and not just call. The Islamophobic tropes in the statement are offensive. The constant harassment and silencing from the signers of this letter is unbearable. And I'm glad that she's fighting back against it because she's calling it what it is. She didn't say anything that was inaccurate. Yeah, so now if you're a United States Congressperson and um, either you saw uh, the video we showed you of Ilhan Omar putting it into context and you chose to smear her instead and you never even called her for clarification or and you used her tweet as an excuse or you saw her tweet and you didn't bother calling her. Hey, Ilhan, what did you mean by this? My dear colleague, when I come to you for votes on corporate issues that my, my backers want, I always go, oh, my colleague, my colleague, my colleague, and Ilhan Omar and AOC and all the other Justice Democrats. You don't want to upset your colleagues. We're your friends and allies, etc. But you, can, even if you didn't see the video and you missed the entire context, you got you had a whole meeting. Some people in the meeting said that they knew the context and they defended her. So you knew, you knew, and you chose to smear her anyway. So don't come around here with colleagues. And so the the guys who smeared her are of course more conservative Democrats, of course. By the way, God knows what they're covering up and and why they wanted to distract with this issue. And it is a giant distraction and by the way, hurts their own party. 
So now it gives the Republicans an opening to say, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Ilhan Omar, I can't tell the difference. Now we can show you the facts, the context, we can show you everything. Now she's talking about a specific case in the International Criminal Court. Marjorie Taylor Greene is talking about Jewish space lasers. But these Democrats, well, what happened to unity, by the way? These are conservative Democrats who are supposed to be like, oh, unity, unity, unity. Only if they want their priorities, which are almost always corporate priorities, right? But when it comes to any other issue, they're like, oh, Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump, how can we help you? Totally. How can we help you destroy our own party? Because we don't give a damn about unity. All we care about is the people who pay our checks, the campaign contributions. That's why uncorrupted politicians like Ilhan Omar, all the Just Democrats, and Jamie Raskin are so, so, so important. And to the point that she was making about covering up war crimes. They say, "Oh, how could you say this about our beloved America and Israel? We have court systems that adjudicate this, unlike Hamas, and and we were elected in a democracy." Well, it's uncomfortable, but Hamas was elected, and and then as soon as they were elected, we said, "Oh, that one doesn't count. That one doesn't count. We don't if we don't like it if you pick the guy we didn't want, right?" But more importantly, what court system? What fairness? So remember the Apache helicopter video that Chelsea Manning exposed. Well, she was put in jail for it, but no one who actually murdered those journalists in Iraq, those are Americans, none of them went to jail. Kirikow exposed that we were torturing people in the CIA, he went to jail for exposing it. None of the torturers went to jail, none, none, let alone the bank bailouts if we're talking about other domestic issues where none of the bankers who crashed our economy went to jail because our justice system is a joke. It protects the rich, it protects the powerful, and most of all, it protects corporations that run this whole country, right? And their executives and, and the people that they donate to. So, and, and if you look here, and I'll give you an example about Israel now. In Israel, they say, well, if you have deeds from hundreds of years ago saying that something is your property or your house, you're allowed to go and brutalize Palestinians that are there. And oh, they say, we are using the court system, we're using the court system. And then we Palestinians go and say, okay, well, here was my deed to my house. Pre 1948, I was in that house in 1948, and and there's no question it's my house. Here's the deed. The Israeli court system says, no, you're a Palestinian. You don't count. You're not allowed to use your deeds. You're not allowed to have property disputes. You don't count. So let's just be real and honest. Now, last things I'll go further than Ilhan Omar. So I don't think it's just the international court cases. Yes, I mean. Brad Sherman and the rest, they have some point. There is a false equivalency. Israel kills way more innocent Palestinians than Hamas kills innocent Israelis. I don't want either side killing anyone innocent, any civilian at all. It's And they're like, oh yeah, do you condemn Hamas? That's the easiest thing in the world. Of course we condemn people when they hit innocent civilians. And they say, ha ha, okay, so good, you condemn Hamas. Well, do you condemn Israel when they kill 10 times, 20 times as many Innocent civilians, including children. No, no, they're beloved. Okay, well, your bias is screaming through. And so the people who have a problem are not Ilhan Omar who are calling out the facts. It's the people who are intensely hypocritical, very conservative while being in the Democratic Party, and that is destroying the credibility of the Democratic Party, and their foreign policy objectives are hideous. And their attacks at fellow Democrats are unconscionable. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.